bipartisan politics, Democrats versus Republicans, liberals versus conservatives, the party that wants the government to pick up the slack versus the party who wants government to keep their hands off their slacks. And it's been like this for years and years and years, as far as anyone can remember. Democrats hate Republicans, Republicans hate Democrats, the circle of life continues, and we get nothing done. But does it have to be this way? I think it's time we have a heart-to-heart about bipartisan politics. Now, when I looked up the definition of bipartisan, Marion Webster gave me this. And I know this sounds like a, the beginning to a bad uh, high school essay, but that's the U.S. school system for you. Kidding. I love my teachers. They're awesome. Um, so Mary Webster says bipartisan is of or involving the agreement or cooperation of two political parties that usually oppose each other's policies. So if you take bipartisan in that um, manner, we really aren't even having bipartisan politics, um, at least in this form. We don't seem to get much done or at least that's what we see between the Democrats and Republicans, whether it's on Facebook or the news or news, uh, as I put it, because um, in my opinion, either if you watch CNN, MSNBC, uh, Fox News, like when I say this, I'm not saying like, like, oh, the fake news, but I feel a lot of news has left what news is and news is, is you state the facts of the event and then they, that that's it. You state the facts of the event, maybe an opinion by an expert um, who was at the scene or whatnot to maybe help the viewer understand the situation better if it's a complicated situation, but usually it was this is an event that happened. This is how it happened, where it happened, you know, who, what, when, where, why, how, and then that's it. You didn't have uh, Sean Hannity, uh, you know, do the news and then for a half hour explain why you should think on um, this particular piece that way. And if you want more on that side, uh, Two weeks ago, I did freedom of speech, which I felt kind of covered that, where uh, I feel the news should just be, like I said, informational. They tell you uh, the, the, um, the information you need to know. You make your decision. You don't need to have someone explain it to you. Um, a few things. I just got on a tangent, but a few things. Uh, the views of Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt are not those of Daclan Radio or those who work for Daclan Radio or are affiliated with Daclan Radio. They're just my views that I am putting forward to you. Um, I try not to be politically leaned. Like I don't try to lean one way or the other. But of course, as with all things, you can't help that. You know, I try my best. And so just throw, throwing that warning out there, you know. Um, this was brought about because I, as, as you know, I mean, you're watching right now. Uh, I use Facebook a lot to do Daklin Radio stuff, to do Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt stuff, to do AD karaoke stuff. So I'm on Facebook a lot, uh, Instagram, Twitter whatnot, social media in general, we'll just say social media in general, I'm on it a lot. But it's gotten to a point, I feel, that social media has become the playground of bullying in the 21st century. And by what I mean that is like, you know, when you were a child and, you know, you were on the playground, you know, teachers aren't watching you as closely, you know, and you see, it was always prime time for bullying. 
you know, you call them kids stupid head or you're calling them this, that, and the other thing. And I feel that social media has become that playground where it's not, the teachers aren't really watching as much as they should. Um, and to be honest, if I didn't have to use Facebook for the things I do, like I said, for Jacqueline Radio, for Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt, whatever, I don't think I'd be on Facebook right now, other than the fact that it lets me communicate uh, with those who know, uh, with my sister who's a nurse who can't uh, call me a lot because, you know, she's working at a hospital, she can't use her cell phone. Um, if it wasn't for that and maybe a few other things, like just the fact that, you know, there are friends that I don't get to talk to a lot and then Facebook allows me to do that, I really wouldn't be using Facebook. Uh, it's just become so toxic, and I, I don't know whether it's just the time of year. I mean, we're heading into the midterms, I think, like, two week, about two weeks, maybe a little more than two weeks, because it's the 6th of November. It's about two weeks. And um, people are just being extra venomous to each other. Some uh, examples I've seen... Uh, I've seen a lot of posts that say being liberal is a mental disease or being conservative means you're full of hate. First off, uh, people shouldn't be defined by the political party that they vote for. All right. You may be Republican for, you may be Republican on a ticket but have liberal views, same as you could be a liberal and have conservative views. You know, that's why there's more options than just Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, uh, Green Party. But uh, many people feel that if you don't go with either, either or Democrat or Republican, it's not worth as much. But Unfortunately, that's the system we have now. And for those overseas that don't, might not get the Democrat Republican vibe uh, with your government, just go like Conservative Party, more Liberal Party. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We're, we've got overseas fans now. Uh, but it's just you see a lot of this stuff on Facebook that doesn't even this you're not furthering anything you're not bringing anything to the, the to the table any discussion to the table you just at this point you just name calling for no reason you are the you are the equivalent of that 10 year old bully who just like pushing people over in the sand and I know probably saying this stuff is going to get me in trouble but I survived doing freedom of speech so well, let's keep going till the uh, pitchforks come out so we'll keep working on that um, speaking of November 6th like I said midterm elections you see a lot of uh, things now that says you should go out and vote go out and vote go out and vote and you know, I know it's been beating in your head, but I really do feel that. Uh, I've had, I've always voted every opportunity I've had to vote since I was 18, whether I voted for a Republican, whether I voted for a Democrat, when I voted in the middle, whether I wrote in my vote, I always f voted. I feel that's the only power we still have to a point is to vote. Um, now you have the choice not to vote. That's perfectly, you have the choice to sit home and not vote. But in my estimation, if you don't vote, then you have no right to complain about it afterwards because you didn't do anything to fix it. That's like, uh, oh, I mean, how can I explain that better? It's like 
you're complaining about how the te how your kid's team is run, but yet you never offered to help, like with practices or to maybe help the coach out, you know, the lot on his plate. But you still complain. You complain about it, but you never actually offered to help. To me, if you don't vote, you shouldn't be able to, uh, but it's not that you shouldn't be able to, but you can't really complain. You didn't do anything to help the problem on either side, you know, whether you're conservative, Repub conservative Republican, liberal Democrat, moderate, whatever, you didn't help by voting. So to me, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't complain. If you don't if you don't vote that's my that's how i feel i mean in the u.s you are allowed your opinion you're allowed to say what you want to say whether it's deemed hurtful offensive terrible you are by constitutional law as long as it's not a direct threat to somebody or a group of people allowed an opinion and allowed to say that opinion and of course there are people that are allowed to rebut to your opinion but to just go down to name calling just because you don't agree with a certain political view instead of taking the time to construct an argument and say no I don't think you're correct here is an alternative or hey i don't agree with this part of your argument here's my view on it you're not really furthering any agenda or you're not furthering society as a whole if you just continue to bully and name call and not offer the constructive criticism or constructive alternatives or, you know, you're not furthering our society as a whole. And right now, that's the problem that we have right now in um, uh, the government. To me, you have both sides, you know, both, high, and, and I, I hate to keep making this, this, this comparison, but this is why I feel like I'm back in high school. Or not even worse, I feel like I'm in middle school. High school at least felt, to me, a little more free. This, is, this feels like middle school when you had 10 kids and you don't, you're either on this side or this side. And then that was it. I know a lot of people might not understand the fact, like having a class with only 10 kids, but it's not fun. Not fun. But anyway... You know, you have this group here, this group here, and there. this group is yelling at this group over here, and they're demeaning this group. You know, he's a hateful, bigoted, terrible person, or she's just a loony bin uh, lady from, from the city. You know, uh... You're just, and then, and then that just creates the gridlock that we have now. Then where nothing of significance gets done anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. Disagreements and debate are essential to the growth of society. But name calling and calls to violence will only lead society to destruction and ruin. To use violent acts to name call, it's not furthering anything. And in fact, divides us further and keeps us from getting together and figuring things out more. I actually wrote notes for this, so trying to make sure I get all my points. I mean, whether it's the 
Antifa who are calling violence for the President of the United States, which I absolutely don't agree with. That's where I think you got to draw the line is the violence, or if it's more of the conservative KKK type groups who are calling violence on liberals. That's, if anything, that's going to start us down a road that I thought we were past, you know, with pretty much a civil war. I'm not, I'm not saying a full out civil war, military style, but like many civil wars where these two groups just fight it out and then the people on the higher up are just going to blame the other side for it. And once again, nothing gets done. Compromise is a word you don't hear a lot anymore. People don't like compromise. Compromise is pe two, not two people winning, but two people losing. And I, I never could understand why people don't use compromise anymore. To me, compromise is a powerful tool to advance society, to advance our agendas forward to trade ideas, to trade thoughts and information, allows us to be better informed, allows us to make better decisions that help, in this case, the wider masses, which is what you should try and be doing, is try to make decisions that help push your society forward to make it more prosperous to then help those who aren't so prosperous. I heard a story um, one time, and I believe, I'm hoping I get my parsons right, Ronald Reagan and Tipper O'Neill were like two just worn factions. I guess Tipper was the uh, head of the house and correct me in the in the comments if I'm getting this wrong. I might be. And they would bat it out, of course, when they were on TV. You know, your idea is not correct. Your idea is not correct. Back and forth. But then afterwards, after all the politicking's done, they would get together and have dinner. They would sit down and have dinner and try to compromise with each other, what can we do to get the important stuff forward? With compromise, you try to get the things that you feel are absolutely necessary through by sacrificing the smaller things that aren't as important to the person you're trying to compromise with. That way you get your important thing forward and done in hopes that that will propel that agenda forward and help the society in that way. And then there go the other side gets to help in their own way, push forward and try to get the society to move up, to get better. Compromise, to me, is not losing. It's making sure that both sides help the one team, which is the United States. There shouldn't be two teams. There should be one team, and that's Team USA, team of the people. Whether you're on the right, whether you're on the left, the important thing is the people. And helping the people, black, white, Chinese, gay, straight, tall, short, whatever, rich, poor, prosper and live in a society where they're able to contribute to help those in need, whether it's with 
government funded programming or through um, allowing corporations and businesses to hire more people for them to prosper on their own. I mean, I'm not here, I'm not going to make the, the, the decision for you, but that's who we should be. We should be rooting for Team America, not Team my side versus your side. Because at the end of the day, it just stagnates society. And as, and as you know, in nature, if you're not growing, if you're not progressing forward, you're going to die. You're going to cease. If a plant does not flower, if a plant does not continue to grow, it will eventually die. If our society does not move forward past this political, social bickering between this side and this side, and not come down with constructive arguments and compromises that help get things done, not only as a government, but as a people, then we're not going to go anywhere. We're not. Now, I've been very fortunate to live in a society, or at least in a community, more, a community is probably a better word. I've been fortunate to live in a community where other than very rare instances, we don't discriminate against each other based on what we think our politics. You know, if, if you're in trouble in this community, I, like I've never seen what we come together because we understand that if we let our differences divide us as a community here in Speculator, then this community is not going to last. Same thing with Lake Pleasant. If we don't come together, because there's not that much, many of us. So if we don't let the, if we don't come together as a community, whether you're left, right, center, shortstop, first base, whatever, the community would, would fall apart. So I've seen people who have had vehement hatred for each other. Like, I don't like that guy. He doesn't like me. You know, if I saw him in a bar, I'd punch his lights out, whatever. And then that person, then one of those people contracts uh, cancer, you know, has cancer. Or their, their brother or sister has cancer or something bad happens to them in life. I've seen that same person who said, I will never talk to that person ever again. Donate a money to this person because he understands that because they don't like each other or because their politics are different, doesn't mean they don't need help, that they don't need assistance to move forward in their life. They're willing to say, okay, we're putting aside our differences, we're putting aside what we don't like about each other, and we're able to move forward so I can help you. This is what politics needs to get to. I might not agree with you on an issue, but I can see that people are hurting and I'm willing to put aside the fact that we have these differences, this, the fact that I might not like you across the uh, political spectrum, you know, but I see that people are hurting. We need to do something. You need to compromise and find a way to help these people, to help people further, to help society move forward. I just, you know, maybe I'm a little naive for my own good, a little too naive for how I am. That's just kind of 
my package deal. If you've ever met me, I'm very, you know, let people do what they want to do. You know, live and let live. I'm not very confrontational. I don't judge people by their opinions. I judge them by their actions, about who they are as a person. So maybe I'm a little naive in thinking that someday we can have two political parties that can say, okay, I don't like what you, what you guys are standing for, and you don't like what we stand for, but we need to get stuff done. So let's try and put aside our differences and figure out a way to help the people of the United States, the people who vote this in, and make sure that this plant, the United States, this tree, continues to thrive and grow instead of stagnate and die. And that's pretty much my incoherent rambling on politics. I am not I'm not a politician of any sort. I mean my first real politics is just being at these at town board meetings. Which then again is people who have different ideas coming together and trying to compromise on an idea or, you know, on a subject. I'm just a guy who likes to see people be happy. That's what I do for a living. You know, karaoke, radio, I try to make sure people are happy, they're entertained, they can forget about life's problems for an hour or so. This is what I do. To see, so see, to see the venom and the hate on social media and sometimes in people's faces hurts. It hurts me to see this. But it, it, you got to start somewhere. And I'm hoping we can start small. And we can just start by trying to find a way to compromise and get things done. Uh, some news, some little happier news uh, before I go off the air. Uh, we are still working on the Daclan Radio offices. As you can see, I'm still in the bunker right now. Made of nice pine wood. It's great down here, actually, except for the lack of sunlight. It just tells you why my skin is so pale. Um, right now, our biggest hurdle is the internet, which to people who live around here know that getting internet in Speculator Lake Pleasant is uh, pretty much like running a decathlon backwards on your hands. It's, it's, it's nearly impossible. But we're, at Daclan Radio, I feel we can do the impossible. Put that on a t-shirt. Um, I'm also working on doing a Patreon. Now, I've never used Patreon before. I've seen it on other shows, YouTube shows, podcasts. For those who don't know what Patreon is, it will allow you, if you wish, to donate money towards Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt is what I would set this Patreon for. So you'd be helping me out. By allowing me to create this show. It's pretty much, to me, it's a tip bucket. It's like the tip bucket I have at um, at the bar when I do trivia night. It just happens to be for this show. Now, at no point am I ever going to charge you to watch this show. It's not even that high, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to charge you for this. Maybe if I get like Hollywood special effects. Maybe. <laughs> It's just a way that if you feel like you can contribute monetarily, like a tip bucket, uh, you would be able to. So I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to set that up. I'm trying to figure out more about that. Um, hit the half an hour. All right, we're good. Last time we hit the half hour mark, uh, it, the video shut off. So I'm glad I didn't do it this time. Uh, so I'm looking more into that. 
maybe other alternatives if that Patreon route doesn't work. Um, just to allow people, if they want to support me monetarily, to have the option to do so. Um, I'm going to try and continue doing Heart to Heart every two weeks. Uh, this seems to be a good schedule just to do it every two weeks. As soon as we run into the holiday season, it might increase more as we get past Christmas into January, being that there's not a lot going on. January, February, even March, April's where it kind of picks up a little, but not much, you know. And then, of course, when we hit May, that's when we're all getting a bit ready for the summer. So, uh, for now, we're going to try and stick to two or, or I would show every two weeks. Um, I might pepper in if I somehow get an interview before then, maybe pepper it in between the two weeks. Um, but and hopefully with the office, when the office is complete and up and ready to go, that will allow me to have a, 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 an area to be able to do shows more professionally, more frequently, be able to get interviews together more frequently. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. Exciting things. Exciting things are happening at Tackling Radio. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you want. Click the uh, like and follow button on Dankle Radio. And if you want uh, and you want updates on Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt, like and uh, follow my page, Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt. Um, and then this will be uploaded to the YouTube page. Um, none, if, if not the end of today, definitely by tomorrow. So if you missed the live feed the first time, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. But if you want to be, uh, if you want to know when we put our original programming up on the Daglin Radio uh, YouTube channel, just go to youtube.com. I believe it's slash Daglin Radio. We have we have we always put like uh, buttons and stuff you can get there, um, or just look up Daglin Radio and hit the subscribe button. Then there's also a little bell icon that will send a message to your email saying, hey, Daniel Radio put up a video. You should probably go watch it. It's really awesome. So, all right. Until next time, I'm Gary Reinhardt for Heart to Heart with Gary Reinhardt. And I hope everyone has a safe and wonderful Halloween. Have a good night.